today we're going to talk about masterpieces, modern masterpieces. So fragrances that are not really all that old, but fragrances that I think still crush it. Hey friends, Ash here with Gin Sense. Hope you're doing well. We got a, a nice mixture here today. We got some niche stuff, some designer stuff. Some of these masterpiece fragrances are obvious. So when you see them, it's just like, oh, okay, we get it. We've heard that, you know, that that's a masterpiece 25,000 times now, we get it. Some of the other ones may be not so obvious, but I wanted a nice mix here. You know, some stuff that's made to be easy to wear, really pleasing, and maybe, you know, some people would consider them simple, but still good. So let's jump into it, friends. Let's check out some modern masterpieces. Don't know what I was doing there, that's weird. We're kicking it off with the TF. Tom Ford with this one, Oud Wood. Oud Wood is one of my favorite fragrances from the house. This stuff is absolutely stunning. It's a great fragrance in so many different situations, casually, formally, on a date. If you're just trying to smell like a boss, it does it all. Very woody, of course. I mean, it is named Oud Wood after all, and that's one of the main notes in the fragrance. Also have sandalwood in here and rosewood as well. It's got a bit of cardamom in here, a bit of vanilla. So of course it's not all woods. And uh, it's just one of those scents that, that sets off the private blend line for me. You know, it's one of those fragrances where you mentioned Tom Ford, I think about that. And also tobacco vanille, also Tuscan leather and a few other fragrances, but, but Oud Wood for sure. I'm gonna try to run right through these. And next up we have a fragrance that you probably wouldn't think of as a masterpiece. It's from Zadig and Voltaire and it's this is him. Yeah, just a, a lowly little Zadig and Voltaire, a little Z and V. But this stuff, especially for the price, is fantastic. It's got sandalwood, vanilla, incense, and pepper, some of the notes in the fragrance. And it's a little bit more adventurous than you might expect, especially if you've never smelled anything from the house. Typically, when you get a designer coming out with their new fragrance or new fragrance line, you expect that it's gonna be something easy to wear, maybe blue, really sweet kind of bubble gummy, maybe give it a toffee or caramel note. You know, that's that's really in right now. This is some surprisingly that kind of fragrance that's going to appeal both to aficionados, even though maybe some would think of it a bit simple, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, and also to just average everyday people who are gonna smell that and be like, man, this is, this is pretty different. It's a great scent though. And for the price you can pick it up for, I think it's a steal. Are you ready for an obvious choice? Good, because I am too. This bottle is uh, monstrous. It looks like uh, it looks like it's a type of bottle that could fight the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers when they're in their Zords and whatnot. It's Terre d'Hermes, just looking like a big hunk of glass. Basically, it's like a lifetime supply of Terre d'Hermes. Uh, looks like it's got what? 100 left in there maybe? Orange vetiver, pepper, and cedar. You know the fragrance, you know the notes, and hopefully, hopefully you've smelled this one before. Some of these, if you haven't smelled them, I'll forgive you. I'll just be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. But Terre d'Hermes, come on, man. I can see you have not smelled it. You, disappointed. You need to go out to your local Macy's, Belk, Nordstrom, whatever, whatever you got, or go online and buy yourself a little sample. Give it a spray. Do it for Harambe. Harambe would have wanted that. Now you will have a decent amount of people who are gonna say, Terre d'Hermes. No, it's a little dirty. I don't like it. I don't like that flint. I don't like that earth. Mm -mm, I don't like it. To that, I would say, well, I don't care because I do like it. Hmm, take that, I <laughs> got him. <laughs> Truly though, uh, it does have this flinty earthiness to it, along with that orange in the opening, gives kind of a dirty orange feeling as it dries down a good amount of vetiver, very classy, sophisticated, mature, grown up, fantastic for the office, and, and really great nearly year round. Zadig and Voltaire, This Is Helm was the first fragrance that I thought, yeah, most people are maybe not going to agree with me on that, but I still think it's a great scent. And this is the next. It's from Narciso Rodriguez, and it is Blue Noir. This is just the Eau de Toilette. There's also an Eau de Parfum. There's an Eau de Toilette Extreme, and now they have a Parfum coming out. So really, Narciso Rodriguez is concentrating on this, on this line. This is a tester bottle. So on the back here, it says, a spicy, musky, woody Eau de Toilette with a modern elegance. Sounds good. It's got vetiver, cardamom, musk, and cedar, and uh, it does smell good. 
smells real good, actually. A little bit similar to Cartier Declaration or Declaration Declaration. Though between the two, I would say this smells more modern. This one is uh, an easier fragrance to pull off nowadays than the Cartier. Not that there's anything wrong with the Cartier. And as well, it's got a little bit of a similarity to Terre de Mez. Kind of in the same overarching family, the same overarching style as Terre de Mez. I'd say it's one of those scents where you would say, do you like Terre de Mez? If the answer is yes, then you would say, well, you'll probably like this too. To an extent, you could think of this as a blue fragrance tailor-made for a gentleman. Like it says on the back, modern and elegant. So we'll go from a blue fragrance, kind of, to a red fragrance, kind of. Polo Red Extreme. This is one of those simple fragrances that does something really well in spite of, or possibly because of, the simplicity of the scent. I mean, when you look at the note breakdown, they don't really give you much. It's pretty bare bones. Coffee ebony wood, blood orange, and that's it. The coffee is, you know, it's slightly like a roast coffee, but it's got more of a dustiness instead of that kind of burnt edge to it. And this one does not have the same fruity explosion off the top that uh, the original red and also red intense have. And for me, especially in cool weather, that actually gives Polo Red Extreme a little more flexibility. It just kind of melds with your skin very well, picks up compliments, gets attention, but never comes across overly cloying or, you know, immature. Next one is super obvious. So we're going from Red Extreme to Rouge 540, Baccarat Rouge 540, of course, from Maison Francis Kirkshawn. Saffron, Amberwood, Jasmine, and Cedar, or Precious Woods, as some people would like to say, or some of the notes in the fragrance. Baccarat Rouge 540 is one of those scents that if you've been around fragrances at all, you've heard about it. Now, of course, the hype for this thing reached the stars years ago, and it still sells like crazy. I mean, people go nuts for this stuff. And like Creed Aventus, BR 540 has been knocked off. I can't even tell you how many times. It is just cloned to death. At this point, it's been cloned so many times that the clones are coming out with like six arms and 12 eyeballs and stuff. They're like, oh, just put me out of my misery. And you've got these brands like, no, we need more BR 540 money, clone it again. That's kind of what's happening. And uh, I feel bad for those clones, but some of them are actually really good. You know, so some of those clones are coming out looking nice. You look pretty good. All sorts of goofy clone talk aside, BR 540 still is the OG. And I think personally that it smells really fantastic. If I could play like Celine Dion's My Heart Would Go On right now, I would, but my video would just get flagged immediately. But you deserve it, fragrance that I'm holding. It's Dior Ohm. This is the original Dior Ohm right here. And also I wanna throw this one in, Dior Ohm Intense. So this is kind of a, a twofer. Man, just get these and just double fist it. All about the iris in these fragrances. It smells to die for. I, I, I know I've, I've harped on these so many times. I get it. I'm sorry, but I can't leave it off. Modern masterpieces. I got I gotta talk about them. Now Dior Ohm, of course, was replaced with Dior Ohm 2020, which I'll come around to and I really do like that fragrance, but man, the original is still number one in my heart. Dior Ohm Intense, you can still find a bit easier than the original Dior Ohm in the US because discounters do carry this. They carry this style, which is the newer Dior Ohm Intense, but you know, it's pretty much the same. I've got uh, like three bottles of Dior Ohm Intense that are original bottles, and it's uh, close enough to those that nobody's gonna care. Truly though, the iris here is so stopping, creamy, sweet, soft, but with with uh, staying power and, and projection. It, it's a wonderful scent, both Dior and Dior Intense. Ooh, it's blue fragrance time, baby. A really expensive one, but it smells worth the price, in my opinion. It's Raja Parfum Elysium, and this is the Parfum. Ooh, look at that shiny black. Ooh. Of course, there's also this Elysium that comes in the Parfum Cologne bottle, which of the two, I'd say most people would say this one looks better, but of the two fragrances, this one, this is the nicest. Did I just spray this so that I could smell it because I like it a whole buttload? Yes, I did. Mm. 
Of course, this is very pricey. That's gonna be a big drawback for a lot of people. But thankfully, when you smell it, the quality is there. And this one, as well as Elysium Parfum Cologne, are both on Twisted Lily. If you shop there, use code GENTS10. Save yourself 10% off the whole site. On something like this, 10% off actually is a decent amount. Elysium Parfum has about 36,000 notes in the fragrance. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but it doesn't feel like it. I know it's got citrus, apple, vanilla, woods, black currant. Honestly, you could kind of get a dartboard and just throw darts, you know, just hang up a bunch of different notes on the dartboard and just throw randomly. And you've probably got about a 90% chance that whatever you hit is in the fragrance. Man, if it doesn't smell like the highest end, bougiest blue fragrance that you've ever smelled, it sparkles like it's a gemstone coming off your skin. It doesn't even make sense, but that's how it smells. It's just so lively. It has that, that Raja Parfum sparkle. Some people have talked about that being like the ambergris. Like, oh, it's the Raja Parfum ambergris. It makes all their, their fragrances so lively. And actually, yeah, they, they do typically smell really lively. All right, let, let's go back down in cost a little bit here. Prada Loam, Iris, Amber, Pepper, and Aroli, some of the notes in this fragrance. And this takes that Prada Iris, that soapiness, that clean feeling into a, a more modern fragrance style. Now, some people, we're gonna prefer Infusion Dome and Amber Pour Ohm that came out before Prada Loam. Lots of Ohm sounds going on with these Pradas, eh? I'm a Canadian now, I guess, eh? And those are great fragrances too. I own both of them, both really nice, soapy, fresh, clean, what you'd expect from Prada, but this one's better. Just as far as that grab and go nature, that wearability, I think this one took it up a notch. That being said, <laughs> like the previous fragrances, Apparently this doesn't sell quite as well as all of us in the fragrance world would, would think it does because Prada Loam Intense got Prada Loam Absolute, Prada Loam Low, I don't know, probably. So it's kind of a bummer if Prada Loam is ever given the ax, and I'm not saying it has been, but I'm saying if it does get the ax, I think that's gonna be one of those scents that you see on the secondary market, you know, like eBay, just going for crazy prices. Okay, last fragrance that's a masterpiece, masterpiece, is my least favorite of the bunch. Ha, ah, yay, save the, save the fragrance for last. <laughs> Invictus, woo! The original Invictus here, the OG. Now, I'm not in love with Invictus, you know, this isn't my favorite stuff, but, and it's a big old butt, just a big old thick butt. Paco Rabanne Invictus has such an influence over other fragrances that are coming out and have been coming out that you can't deny it. And really that makes it a masterpiece scent for its day and age. Like the influence that this has is huge. How many different fragrances come out where me or somebody else or you smells it and goes, oh, invictus -y. Yeah, like it's become such a thing that you don't need to say anymore. You just go, oh, Invictus-y. And everyone goes, okay, I know what that means. So I can crap on it, you can crap on it, whoever can crap on it. But at the end of the day, Paco Rabanne Invictus, that's a modern masterpiece. Now you will have some people who go like, not really. And they'll bring up something like uh, some pop musician and they'll be like, well, that sells this many albums. And then this master musician, his, his doesn't sell as much. Does that make that pop music a masterpiece? Hmm. And I would say for you, probably not. But for however many millions of people that like it, probably. Just depends on what you like at the end of the day. Do I like Invictus? Not really but I can't deny it. Bubblegum, sweet, fresh, marine notes, bay leaf, jasmine, citrus, huge compliment getter, very versatile, great clubbing scent, great date night fragrance, great night out fragrance, great casual fragrance, great office fragrance. It does a lot, <laughs> the versatility is through the roof. I just don't like the stuff, but I know lots of people do, and it makes this list. All right, my friends, that's gonna do it for me. Thank you for hanging with me. Thank you for your support. Stay safe out there, guys. See you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.